Hey, crypto traders checking in on the sector. We've got the B word conference going on currently. We've got the bulls bouncing significantly off of some key support levels. We'll see if it's enough to change momentum on the daily chart. I'll show you what I need to see for the bulls to prove it. And we're going to look at the charts compared to U.S. marijuana stocks as we've done in the past a few times. They're still correlated and I think you should be paying attention to both. So we know the bears have had complete control on the daily time frame for the last few weeks. It got a bit ugly yesterday, second big red day in a row, and we were right down towards support. And as the thumbnail of this video says, we actually held support. That's very surprising. We are very used to at this point, breaking support levels, leading to short-term bounces. And in this instance, playing off the support level was the way to go. There were a lot of names that bounced off support, ADA, now has a triple bottom at its $1 support level. ETH had a triple bottom now at 1700 And Bitcoin now has essentially a double bottom. I guess $500 is still a decent amount above that level. Less than 2%. But held it. Held it for now. So a significant move in response to that bounce. And it was essentially a four-hour bear flag that just failed to follow through. And we had multiple rejections from 30,000 previous psychological support. And then it acted as resistance. And once we got over it, that was the bounce following through. So I had a timely post on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, talking to friends. And I, I definitely lived two lives. You know, I'm not talking about markets and trading aside from right now. And when I'm on the computer talking to you all. But I occasionally make a post, you know, when... When the stock market was dumping in 2018, I made a post saying, hey, anyone under 50 years old, this is what you're looking for, fear to buy long-term investments. And my post yesterday was because up at the top, I would see you know, friends starting to talk about crypto that would never post about crypto. And that's them just feeling the euphoria and wanting to talk about it. So my post yesterday was just saying, you know, now is the time we want to be looking for longer term entries. Not when everybody's talking about it that doesn't usually talk about it. When you're not hearing about it, when there's fear and when it's dropping, that's when we want to be looking to DCA, dollar cost average, into long term positions as long as you're willing for it to go to zero and as long as you're looking for multiple years out. That was essentially the message and that message remains true and it remains true for a lot of things. It remains true for the US marijuana sector, which we'll look at here in just a second. But again, we don't want to be making long-term entries when it's in euphoria mode. We want to be making long-term entries in fear. And any long-term entry that has ever been made during stock market or cryptocurrency fear has resulted in a winner. Maybe that won't always be the case, but that has always been the case up to this point. So on Bitcoin right now, we have a, a solid bounce. Again, the B word conference is going on right now. We'll see if anything comes out of it. And there's, that's potential a little bit of fuel for the fire here. Definitely some shorter term shorts having some pressure put on them, but also maybe some anticipation. You know, what is Elon Musk going to say? Is there going to be some kind of news announcement? And the reason to be watching for that is because if no, if no news comes out of it, then we could look for that to lead to a temporary top. And we know we're due for four hour consolidation. We'll be looking for a four hour higher low to form. I'm just remembering a post that I made this morning that I want to share for mindset. So tears of aggressiveness. And that is the question as traders that we need to ask ourselves when we're trying to establish a trade game plan. So tears of aggressiveness, the most aggressive bulls bottom fished off supports and they entered yesterday. The next most aggressive bulls will be looking for a four hour higher low entry on consolidation perhaps when we hit five minute oversold conditions from here. Middle of the road bulls will be hoping for more bounce follow through to create space for a daily higher low to form. So wherever this move tops out, 12 hour or daily looking for a higher low to form. So if you look at the 12 hour perspective, we've got resistance here of 32.5. We just rejected from that level, potential inverse head and shoulders. If we see a little period of consolidation here, but essentially the middle of the road bulls are looking for a daily or a 12 hour higher low to try and make uh, an entry. The less, the more conservative bulls are waiting for a confirmed daily trend change and very conservative bulls are waiting for a weekly trend change, which are you. And obviously that's just looking from it from a bull perspective with where we stand at these levels. 
And there's obviously bear perspective as well. But answer that question. For me, I'll be looking for a 12 hour higher low. Again, I still have my monthly higher low attempt entries from the last flush. So I still have some Bitcoin and ETH. They're small positions. I wouldn't mind adding to them. And I will add to them on a 12 hour higher low for Bitcoin down here. Again, it's looking for the monthly higher low. The bulls have a lot of proving to do, but that is what we're watching for. And I just remembered, I took my eye off my 12 hour downturning support line. Looks like we bounced just above it. Didn't quite hit it. And we can watch some downtrending resistance and we are right at it. So a little bit of hope, held support, solid move. The stock market experienced three days of fear and has now seen three days of bounce and the S&P 500 is 1% from all time highs. And again, determining whether you're aggressive or conservative, you don't need to nail the bottom. And just as an example, CGC, back in the day, 2017, when I took my crypto profits and put them in Canadian MJ, I just want to give an example of not needing to nail the bottom. So look at this prolonged downtrend. We had a run to 14, a huge run, many hundreds of percent, big pullback, lower high, and then a fade. Look at this drop, months and months of a 50% plus drop. And we then saw a bounce, and I view this bounce as all one move, 490 to 763. We pulled back, set a higher low as a little bull flag, back tested EMA support, and broke 763. I went bullish and shifted my perspective to bullish on the break of 763. And at that point in time, we were already 55, 56% off the low. So I didn't need to nail the bottom. And then from there, after going bullish, we then ran hundreds of percent over the next six months. We ran 300 plus percent, almost 400%. So the point is, you don't have to nail the bottom. You can wait for a daily trend change. You can wait for a weekly trend change. And of course, it's a lot easier to to be in a bullish position and hold conviction when you have the wind at your back and you're green in that trade the vast majority of the time that you're in that trade. So don't need to nail the bottom. While we're on that subject, let's just go back. We'll do a little bit more analysis on Bitcoin. Then we'll look at USMJ and the comparisons. So what I'm looking at now on Bitcoin is daily resistance, which we are currently rejecting from. Plenty of space for a four-hour high or low. If we get more follow-through from here, we'll have plenty of space for a daily high or low to try and form. Then we zoom out. We'll look at weekly resistance. 36.7 thousand is the most important longer-term level for me. And again, look at the monthly chart. We've got, what, a week, a week and a little bit to go. And we're battling to hold the monthly EMA 12, just like NIO did Monthly inside bar bear break with zero follow through, nice long lower wick, and then the bounce got underway. So Bitcoin, probably going to form a monthly inside bar. A monthly inside bar bear break won't be game over, just like it wasn't for NIO. But ideally, the bulls want to keep closing above the EMA 12. It's not a make or break for me, but it would be nice for the bulls if they could hold that level. So let's now look at the monthly chart which we're on, and we'll compare it to TCNNF. And I had forgotten about this correlation and have to keep reminding ourselves to constantly be watching everything in all these markets. But the last Twitter post that I made about this correlation was right here in April, mid-April, and we had just started monthly consolidation in Trulieb, and I was highlighting, hey, Bitcoin looks exactly like Trulieb, but we have not started monthly consolidation yet. And then Bitcoin is now doing the exact same thing. TCNNF is the ticker. So there's still a lot of correlation here. And the bottom line is look for clues. If you are interested in US marijuana stocks, look to crypto for clues. If you're interested in crypto, look to US marijuana stocks for clues. They are both the highest risk assets that you can be in. There's individual companies and individual names that are higher risk. But as far as an an asset class or a sector, these are the highest risk, highest reward. That's why they're trading similarly, in my opinion. Over the last four months, while we've been dropping in the highest risk, highest reward assets, the lesser risk, 
markets have been going up. This is the financial sector. The financial sector made a huge move up while we've been consolidating and now it's looking a little bit toppy. We have some monthly consolidation underway, but bottom line is the market left the most aggressive sectors and they will return. The growth stocks, same thing. They were the one of, one of the most aggressive, high risk, high reward sectors. Everybody left them and then we had significant monthly higher low bounces. Solar sector, biotech sector, not a significant bounce. Who else? ARKK. So can we get some clues? Without a doubt, TrueLeave gave us clues for Bitcoin consolidation. And it was a factor. I was all cash in Bitcoin by the time the all-time high was hit. Granted, I was all cash a bit early in the mid to upper 40,000s. I was all cash. So I missed out on that last leg up. But this chart definitely was one of the reasons why I was cautious. It gave me information and it gave me a couple little clues. It had the same Wyckoff distribution on the daily time frame, And I looked at those daily charts and said their exact same thing. And I didn't even really know what Wyckoff distribution was at that point in time. Keeping an eye. True Leap trying to hold EMA 12 support. Lower high every month. That pattern needs to break. Same deal. All right, moving on to the dominance chart. It is altcoins leading the way to the upside, which as you know, if you've been watching... That's the way I like it. If I'm going to believe that the bulls can have some follow through daily consolidation underway for the dominance chart, four hour downtrend with a little lower high and lower low. So we topped out at on the candle that was 4 a.m. on July 20th. And if we look at what where Bitcoin was at 4 a.m. on July 20th, it was the bottom. The bottom of the U.S. dollar pairing was the top of the dominance chart. So again, the bigger moves are led by alts. And I don't need to tell you that today. Look at the altcoin space. Matic, AXS, Theta, just huge movers today. We don't drop 30% in a day. We drop 30% over a few days, but a big green 30% day today, very notable shift in momentum. We are well off of those lows now. And there's a lot of space for the bulls to try and change trends and shift momentum. Bitcoin hourly consolidation underway, tons of space for an hourly higher low. And again, having some exposure helps with anti-FOMO. So the fact, you know, if I didn't have any positions and I looked at today, I would be feeling some FOMO without a doubt. And I would have to actively recognize that and say, okay, I can't act on that FOMO. I have to establish a trade game plan and trade off that game plan. But having some exposure, even if it's small, I'm 90% cash, but I have enough exposure where it's my anti-FOMO. And again, that's the purpose of the long-term no-touch positions as well, anti-FOMO. So the dominance chart, we're watching these weekly levels and we really want to see, if we are bullish crypto, in my opinion, we really want to see these resistances remain. 48.69, 48.28, and we just topped out at 47.62 and we're just rejecting from EMA 12 resistance. If I'm a Bitcoin bull, I really want to see 44, 48 break here and altcoins continue leading bounces and follow through and daily trend changes. ETH USD, triple bottom at 1700 now. That is the level to be watching. I guess it's a quadruple bottom. Quadruple bottom at 1700. Big time move, broke the daily lower high of 1994. We cleared 2000. Weekly perspective. It is a descending triangle. It is a horizontal base of support and lower highs every bounce. So we topped out at 29.14. Then we topped out at 24.11. Anything under 24.11 will just be another lower high. We can condense it down to the two day time frame. And I would expect a lower high compared to 24.11 on this bounce. And then the bulls need to confirm trend changes. We can watch for the 12 hour. Looking for a 12 hour higher low, we'll have to confirm trend changes on a lot of time frames. So consolidation potentially shaping up. We're looking for hourly higher lows. When we lose the hourly uptrend, we zoom out and scout a four hour higher low. When we lose the four hour uptrend, we zoom out and scout a 12 hour or daily higher low. 
And the ETH BTC chart is trying to set a weekly high or low and remain in equilibrium. And there's a lot of altcoins doing this as well. ADA, double bottom at its weekly support. Binance, which we'll look at in just a second. But there's a, a grouping of altcoins that have this weekly equilibrium that is worth watching and are trying for higher lows now. And we need to confirm daily trend change to believe that that weekly higher low is being set. And if we get that, then the dominance chart on Bitcoin will be dropping back down and rejecting from weekly EMA 12 again. And in my opinion, the best case scenario for the cryptocurrency space, if we're going to see Bitcoin and other names set monthly higher lows, is for these tightening weekly BTC pairings to break bull. AXS USDT. Daily equilibrium watch. So we hit the all-time high. We had a massive pullback of over 50%. And now we've got a massive bounce. It's a bounce leader here. And we're scouting a daily lower high, anything under 29.20. Four hour, still needs a trend change to be convincing. But with this much volatility in both directions, we know to scout an equilibrium is the most likely scenario. So patient bears are just waiting and hoping to get as extended, hoping the bulls get as extended as possible up into the mid $20 range to be scouting a daily lower high. And the BTC pairing is doing the same thing. It's this scenario where we have weakness in the crypto space. And because the BTC pairings are dropping hard at the same time as the US dollar pairings are, the oversold bounces take place at the same time. And that leads to big gains. Again, we're up 30% today because the BTC pairing and the US dollar pairing are correlated on this bounce. Were there any clues or did it start at the same time? I don't know. Bull break. The real bull break here was 2,200 hours on July 20th. And the real bull break here, 22. So it happened at the same time. But nice gains. And again, any bulls that played this bounce... One way to do it is the exact same way that I played the the $30,000 flush on Bitcoin. Sell enough that you are risk-free and you can stick your stop under the low and you either nail the monthly high or low or you get stopped out with no loss and are back to all cash to try it again later. Matic USDT was absolutely crushed. The daily RSI was down in the low 20s. It was in free fall and we've made back now on today's bounce six days of the, the drop in one big bull move. Hourly time frame, or it was a four hour trend change confirming. And that was nice, you know, gave the bulls time to work with. Big enough bounce off that low. It was a solid 15% bounce, plenty of space to scout the higher low. And then as soon as that four hour trend change confirmed, the bulls were off to the races and the BTC pairing did the same thing. So again, when we're correlated to the downside, the drops are more extreme. And when we're correlated to the upside, the bull moves are much stronger. So again, for all these names, we're in hourly uptrends. When we lose them, we watch for a four hour high or low. When we lose the four hour uptrend, we watch for a daily or a 12 hour high or low. On a name like this, when I see this many rejections from four hour EMA 12 resistance for a week plus, I want to see that hold on a back test. We're crossing those EMAs bullish. And on any four hour consolidation, if we're going to get followed through on this bounce, bulls need to hold that EMA back test. I like Binance Clarity. This is a really nice equilibrium. And if in cash, you want to see this get as tight as possible before a break sometime in August. And we've got a lower high, higher low, lower high, trying for another higher low here. Key support is 225. We're bouncing off of 254. The most important resistance is 340. I haven't looked at the monthly. Just inside bars. EMA 12, grinding the price. If the inside, well, it's looking for a monthly high or low. Inside bar, likely going to see another inside bar. Watch how this July inside bar breaks in August. And the BTC pairing is doing the same thing. And it's one of the stronger weekly equilibriums on the BTC pairing because the retracement from our recent high is not as significant. ADA BTC retraced all the way to support. And there's a bunch of these names. 
I don't think Theta is still in it. 12.5. Nope, broke that support. But the bottom line is out of the names that are still forming that equilibrium, Binance is one of the stronger ones still holding on. And it too is monthly inside bars. Watch for these monthly inside bars to break. Write it down. Stick it next to your computer. Watch for them to break in August. So again, I will be having a bullish lean on crypto as long as Bitcoin is looking for a monthly high or low. Definitely, I can have a bearish lean in the short term as I have for the last two weeks because bulls proved absolutely nothing. But until this monthly bounces, I'm looking for the monthly bounce. And then once it does, if it's a weak bounce, that would be a huge red flag to me if that were to happen. And again, just looking at our growth names, two different scenarios, XBI, uh-oh, I hope that's not it for our bounce. That's a weak bounce. Versus electric vehicle name, LI. Again, just massive range, equilibrium setup, or NIO is a better example. Over 50% retracement on the bounce, creating a lot of space. So the retracement size, again, we're looking ahead of ourselves a bit here, but once the monthly bounce gets going, the size of the bounce retracement will be very telling. 382, red flag. 50% plus, good bounce. That's it. So we'll see how long the bulls can keep their short-term momentum. We'll be watching for 12-hour higher lows. That's the next time I'm scouting an entry. Looking to increase position sizing a bit. Keep an eye on the conference for any kind of headlines that may come out of it. And do good things. See you next time. I'm making bone broth soup. So I come out here and grab a little bit of everything. We're going to do first potatoes of the year. It's like a treasure hunt. Oh, yeah. These are the smaller plants. I don't think there's many potatoes. That's the seed that it came from. So that was planted, oh, three months ago. And it's just the foulest smelling, decomposing. There's nothing worse than getting a handful of that goo when you're pulling up these potatoes. And I used to work on a, <laughs> an organic farm and I hand dug 400 foot rows of potatoes and you would just get one of those every now and again. And it was something special. So not very big producers. Those were Yukons, I believe. These are some kind of red version, maybe Adirondack red. Let's see if these are more prolific. Looks to be the case, so that's notes to make for next year. That's two plants versus one plant.